those that were already here and also welcome to those that were not uh, joining the last uh, days uh, that we had still full of workshops and other activities. So uh, today we have uh, a workshop, a joint workshop of uh, two European projects. So one is uh, the IH Hero and the other one is uh, Rehi. Um, my idea was to bring the two projects together because there is a lot of, uh, of interaction and specifically um, on developing uh, modular robotics technology is, is one of the aims that the DIH Hero has and is one of the main objectives also of the Rehi project. So we have a number of uh, talks today from both projects that reflect uh, this part. So um, to DIH Hero, so this is a pan-European network on healthcare robotics and uh, it, the main objective is to improve the quality of care for European citizens while building a global market potential. So DIH Hero is very much also SME uh, oriented. Um, we want with DIH Hero to connect the stakeholders together and enable them to develop uh, innovative uh, products. So this is a project that has like a staged calls for SMEs to develop uh, their technology, to pilot them, um, and, and so on. So um, there are 17 partners in that, uh, that project, so spread all over Europe. So there is a, a, a big inclusion in, in this project as main objectives. One condition for participating in that project uh, was from beginning on that the partner um, is uh, integrated in one of those uh, regional uh, DIHs, Digital Innovation Hubs. So uh, there is a common rule that per region there is one specific Digital Innovation Hub and of course the Digital Innovation Hub uh, needed to be sort of uh, a health uh, care uh, hub. So uh, a hub not providing specifically only technologies, but also to have the access to the local infrastructure on hospitals, on uh, administration, on public side, but also on private side. So the role of these uh, 17 core partners is really to support this ecosystem. Um, there is uh, one of the work packages is related to harmonize uh, standards. Uh, when we are talking about standards here, it's not only about uh, uh, the mandatory or the governmental standards, but it's also about uh, uh, voluntary standards, industry standards, uh, or we call them also best practices when it's not yet a standard so that the industry is involved in forming this type of uh, common standards, which uh, we, we will see in one of the presentations also has, of course, a lot to do with interoperability, uh, with uh, having joint solutions, uh, which, uh, which is one of the, of the points uh, that uh, I think uh, is very important and is also an objective in, in the rehype project, so that brings it also well together uh, uh, the, to have uh, a, a common session today or a workshop today. And then the representation, of course, of the hubs and partner um, and create uh, additional networks, so there is a lot about networking, but it is an uh, innovation action and not uh, uh, a coordination action is uh, uh, projects. So I do not go too much into detail on that uh, on, on that busy slide. So the main activities that we have done is really to promote networking events. So this was of course a bit of a challenge uh, during the last uh, two years, but we had started very busily in organizing physical events. We had a number of virtual events afterwards um, specifically to highlight our brokerage events. So where SMEs 
could, could get vouchers that they could travel and get to an event place, meet up uh, and discuss potential collaborative uh, projects. Mm -hmm. Because one of the condition in those calls uh, uh, was, and I say was because the last call has already been closed. Uh, um, there were, uh, I think in total now four, so planned were three, but there came a specific COVID related call in addition the, that was presented. Um, so there was the condition that the consortium needed to be on two innovation hubs. So it needed to be uh, two partners from two uh, regions. And even in this condition, as we were not so sure, we it was even defined between two countries. So, so not only that it was two regions within one country, um, but that's also, I mean, the objective there is also that some language barriers and so on are tested when, when uh, partners uh, join together. Uh, we had a number of info days and uh, then also a DIH Hero Knowledge Conference uh, um, and, and so on and so forth. So. Um, Okay, so so the activities. Uh, I'm I'm now going to this uh, work package seven that is about these standards and best practices. Um, maybe a little bit selfish because it's the one that we are coordinating here. So, but uh, it's also we have most of the knowledge on on that side. So the idea was there really to uh, work around the interoperability about human machine interfaces. And we also identified that software development in healthcare robotics really is an issue and, and to, to have best practices on, on software development is, is an important part. So we had identified needs, barriers uh, and uh, standards and best practices. This is still ongoing. So I hope also that uh, this here can serve as a platform to join together and really to, to discuss on, on that topic. Uh, um, and then the idea is also that we can compile and harmonize uh, this information so that, for example, we can organize uh, as in workshop that then could be like one of the official tools that can be used for uh, doing a first step of standardization that then also is is published uh, like like that um, and for me as with uh, the rehide project we are at the uh, working in a lower part of the trl but i think this standardization really needs to start very early in the process it's not sufficient that only after you have developed everything you start about thinking on non-standardization. I would like to close here this part and I would like to welcome uh, Sandra Wilke, uh, who is the coordinator of uh, the Rehype project to give a short overview on what Rehype so far has been done. Thank you, Sandra, for being here. Um, thank you. So yeah, um, thank you for the introduction. My name is Sandra Hirsch. I'm from Technical University of Munich. I'm standing here in my role as a coordinator for um, the H2020 project Rehive. I'm standing here representing a consortium of 11 partners coming from academia, clinics, and industry and SMEs. So um, I'm proud to give some introduction about Rehive. Um, it stands for Rehabilitation Based on Hybrid Neural Prosthesis. And the idea is to develop an upper limb um, hybrid neural prosthesis to support the rehabilitation um, of, uh, yeah, of stroke survivors. And uh, where we combine exoskeleton technologies and functional electrical stimulation. Started in 2020 beginning and uh, it's a four year project within the Horizon 2020 um, framework. The um, original idea is to really develop a system 
that does not only support the rehabilitation just after acute stages and within the clinics, but can really accompany the journey of a patient um, through the rehabilitation process until home. So, and this is in, in contrast what has been done before, where typical rehabilitation devices would just be yeah, administered um, or would just be available in hospital care. So when we look into this problem from a technological side, apparently we need to continuously assess um, the status of the patient and also adjust the rehabilitation protocols. So that means that for every patient, we need a specific, um, yeah, um, kind of system. So it needs to be adaptive, um, starting from early mobilization um, for very severe uh, um, yeah, symptoms in, in the acute stage. Um, and it needs to be adaptive on the level of hardware and on the level of software. So because starting from the in-clinic um, rehabilitation care, it needs to be, um, yeah, the system needs to be transferable to in-home. So that's the vision to make it that adaptive and also that modular. Um, the core technology in terms of the technical approach, as I mentioned already, is based on a combination of um, exoskeleton technologies um, that can um, be applied uh, on different parts of the upper body, um, from the shoulder level um, down to the hand uh, finger level, and uh, combined with functional electrical stimulation to take out the best of both technologies um, to facilitate the rehabilitation process. In terms of software, everything is um, yeah, centered or focused around the concept of a digital twin, so where we constantly um, get information about the patient status, and there will be a patient coach that makes um, decisions um, on how to uh, improve the, or how to, what kind of um, rehabilitation protocols um, to administer. So it's based on a cognitive architecture in combination um, with uh, yeah, this kind of yeah, it's called cognitive architecture. So it's combined with um, kind of with gamification or yeah, virtual reality, both in the game, gamified environment, but also in environments that are close to um, activities of daily living. So where the patient gets enough motivation to get engaged and to keep up with the training. Um, we facilitate participatory design process very early on, um, particularly with the help of our clinical partners, uh, with a lot of workshops um, to get uh, their impression. And I guess you will hear some more um, about that uh, as well in, uh, in, in later um, talks. So, um, in terms of partners, I mentioned we have 11 partners from all over Europe. Uh, with many different um, yeah, expertise. Of course, Technalia um, is one of the partners. And uh, yeah, we have uh, expertise starting from with two clinics, um, with the, uh, where we, yeah, we develop the user requirements, um, and uh, then from the cognitive architecture side, uh, from control, from, of course, the hardware development, exoskeleton, um, functional electrical stimulation development, um, sites um, up to uh, yeah, the ethical legal analysis and in the end will also go until evaluation um, of the usability in our patient cohorts. Um, so I'll, yeah with this I'm basically at the end I'm very happy and uh, thank Thierry for the idea to really bring those two things together because uh, yeah this kind of adaptation modularity of course even though we're still in this um, low TRL bar part. Um, as Jerry mentioned, um, standardization is very important to keep in mind to really um, yeah, facilitate the, the 
uh, market um, introduction of those technologies that are modular, that are supposed to get at this, that are supposed to be personalized to each patient. And with this, I would like to thank Terry for the opportunity to um, yeah, have those two projects um, in together. And uh, yeah, you will see some of the, our project results um, already later, also later in the talks that are still upcoming. And so thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you can leave it here. Uh,